So here is an example socket of an inverting amplifier using op-amp. And uh, we will see how this socket provides a very high input impedance that is high Z or Z in or R in of the circuit, okay? So when we talk about calculating the input impedance, uh, we look at the circuit from the input side. So there are two stages of this amplifier. So this is called as a first stage. This is called as a second stage. And if we analyze the second stage in the beginning, we see that it's an amplifier with a very high open loop gain AOL. It has positive supply pin and a negative supply pin. The positive pin, which is an input pin, is connected to the ground. And to the negative pin, we are feeding back the portion of the output through the combination of this impedance network consisting of capacitor and the feedback resistor. The values are as shown. And uh, we see now to the inverting input, we have the resistor connected and to the other end of the resistor, there is a signal coming right here if we for a moment forget this stage. So we see there is an input that is coming here, V1. And if we look at this stage completely, it is an inverting amplifier using op-amp with the gain of the ratio of resistors set by the ratio of resistor R2 over R1. And it is inverting, that's why there is a negative sign. So the output is gain multiplied by the input. Now, what is an input resistance of this circuit if we look at the circuit from this point. Okay, we still assume that we don't have this first stage. And if we look that for the inverting amplifier, R in is equal to 5 kilo ohm. Okay, but uh, in some cases, you would need a very high input impedance of the amplifier because the signal that is coming from the source may be uh, having a very low current actually, okay? That is going to become an input to the amplifier. So in that case, having a very high input, in, input impedance of the amplifier ensures your source can be connected as an input to the amplifier. It can drive the amplifier, okay? So in some cases, R in equal to 5K, as in this case, may not be sufficient. So you want R in to be in the range of mega ohm, for example. So in the previous circuit, if I want to show you the circuit right here, you can see that the R in, that is here, here for R1, and we have chosen R1 to be 10 mega ohm. So this is again an inverting amplifier, same circuit. And we have analyzed this circuit for the R in is equal to R1. And that was 10 mega ohm. However, for practicalities, such a using such a high value of resistor, it means you have a high power consumption in the circuits and the resistor sizes are also large. So how to elevate this problem? Okay. So, and the gain will also be lower if you have a very high value of the resistance in the gain factor, unless you increase the value of R2. So to circumvent this problem, what we have done, we can use the two-stage inverting amplifier. So instead of directly feeding the signal to the input of the amplifier, we will use the voltage buffer, which is a non-inverting configuration of the amplifier, non-inverting amplifier. It is also called as voltage follower circuit. Voltage follower or voltage buffer. 
so it buffers your input voltage okay so what you have is now you apply input signal to the positive pin of the first stage or amplifier and the negative pin is connected to the output through this negative feedback and the gain of this amplifier in the closed loop is approximately one that means vo is equal to v in vo of this amplifier which is right here so now this vo which is equal to v1 v in which is this signal becomes an input to the second stage and now if we look at the input resistance or input impedance of this first stage it is very high which is the differential impedance of the amplifier that is r in or rd which is very high in practical of m rd is approximately equal to 500 into 10 to the power 6 it can be this high so and the output impedance of the first stage is very low so we can say that the R out here is very low in the few ohms or few tens of ohms. So that can help us to drive any amount of load, which is the second stage. So this is how we can use the two-stage inverting amplifier with high input impedance.